This conference will now be recorded. Hello all, welcome back for another session on uh, performance testing using Neoload. So in the previous session, we had uh, uh, just discussed on uh, an introduction to uh, to performance and uh, to Neoload and uh, what all the uh, aspects that we have uh, we are going to learn from this course and uh, and that's about it and we have uh, uh, recorded one simple workflow and uh, we have just tried replaying it this is all we had done in the uh, in the previous session um, in this session uh, what we are going to do is we are going to discuss about an interesting topic and uh, this is uh, this is one of the vital part uh, in performance uh, so uh, let me uh, start ahead with that uh, the topic okay so uh, if we compare in the yesterday session what we had discussed is uh, we recorded one workflow right so uh, when we uh, say uh, any, anything as workflow a series of actions is called as a workflow okay and in this case uh, we had recorded some of the uh, actions that as an end user that I had performed in my uh, in the browser and uh, this has translated into uh, the script okay all these action points so what did what did I do I will let me uh, once again uh, show it to you so I've just launched the the JPEG store so my first action is the launch and then I have clicked on fish so clicking fish is my second action so all of these are can also be called as user action okay then I have clicked on the angel fish as a product and then finally I clicked on the item then I'm back to the home page these are the actions as an end user I have performed uh, in this specific application using a Chrome browser okay so uh, from performance perspective okay we are going to call these actions are as transactions okay so uh, each and every action that is being performed in this web application is going to be called as an as a transaction okay um, so in this case we have uh, looked at five different uh, transaction and all this together uh, will form this specific uh, workflow or the uh, user path okay so in this transactions right uh, ideally it can be divided into two types okay uh, so uh, if we look at these transactions right I, I have what I am doing is I'm just directly getting into the uh, web page and then I'm not uh, you know signing in or I'm not doing any uh, any uh, uh, kind of action where I'm uh, feeding some data right for example username and password for example if I go to this sign in and then if I'm uh, providing my username and password and if I'm trying to log in then these actions are going to be we can call it as a critical uh, transactions okay and uh, this can be named as a uh, authenticated transactions okay so one of one of the transaction type is authenticated and of course the other one is the authenticated is the opposite of So what what is this uh, you know authenticated and unauthenticated uh, uh, transactions if you ask um, so as I said uh, so for example let's say I'm going to uh, launch Amazon so uh, so I have just uh, you know landed up in the Amazon and I'm, I'm planning to let's say buy some um, let's say some books okay and as an end user I'm just simply searching books and I have uh, now into the uh, books category and I'm seeing some 
uh, some most best best sellers and some some offers that is being happening with this right so if you see this right i haven't logged in uh, to my account but still i'm just simply uh, going through the page and then i'm just uh, browsing through uh, what is what is available uh, from the book segment and then i'm i'm just if i if i'm interested i may uh, place an order okay but all of these uh, transactions right uh, like how i am uh, just going through uh, all of them are unauthenticated most of them okay because the user is not identified there okay so that doesn't mean after a sign in uh, will all of the transactions are going to be authenticated transactions no we will we will see this difference shortly okay what are, what is this difference okay so as far as this script is concerned we have just recorded an unauthenticated workflow that means none of these transactions has uh, any data that i am feeding feeding in like a username password or some other uh, critical uh, information right uh, maybe your credit card uh, numbers or uh, something like that right uh, yes but if you see uh, if you look at any banking project right uh, let's say we want to make a transaction okay before we uh, do any action on those web application first you would be asked to log into your uh, your account and then you would also sometimes need to uh, verify your um, identity or you just need to authorize right so all of the banking related transactions are going to be critical and there is going to be a lot of uh, dynamic values that might get passed yes lokanath do you have any questions <coughs> yeah uh, understood uh, navin yeah okay sure yes of no i understood so I'm just checking if uh, this. Can you please go on mute? I'm able to hear myself. So let's uh, create a new account, uh, guys. Okay. So I'm I'm creating a new user. Okay. I'm going to name this as. So my username user id is jpet user and the password is going to be jpet user it's going to be the same thing okay and i'm going to provide a neutral value here okay not being very specific here i'm just going to provide something like this maybe a random number Just uh, providing. See if you see these informations, right? Uh, that is, uh, so it is asking uh, the complete data of like uh, you know user ID, password, and uh, all of this data, right? These can be treated uh, as a critical information. JSIP and something like this. Okay. And then I'm going to save this information. Now I have just created an account. I'm just going to log into this. Okay. Now I have logged into uh, the user I just created. Okay. I'm just going to my account and I'm able to see the information that I have created with. Okay. Okay. Fine. Now let's try recording the similar workflow okay so what we did uh, we just launched clicking on fish angel fish clicking in clicking an item and then coming back to the home page okay we will do the same thing only extra transaction is logging in okay so let's see how we can record that And I'm going to use 
Internet Explorer. So this will invoke an instance of an Internet Explorer and whatever that happens <coughs> in this in this uh, instance, everything gets will be recorded by the new node. Okay. So I'm going to launch. Okay. Since I have this link handy, I'm just going to directly click on it. So I've launched the, <coughs> the application. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign in. So I have just given sign in. This will bring to this this specific page where we can feed in the username and password. And after that, I'm going to do login. I'm going to click on this button. Okay, so I have mentioned this as a click login. <coughs> JPET user. So I'm going to click on login. Now I have logged into the uh, application. Okay. Now let's uh, go to fish. So I'm going to click on fish. And then it is followed by angelfish. And then finally, selecting any item. Now we are into this page and we're going to go back to the home page. Okay, so I'm just providing this home page. So before we uh, go and check into any of the transaction or action we are just going to give this name right here okay and then once the recording is done okay let me sign out okay sign out from this page from this application okay so i'm going to stop the recording So once we stop the recording, we will get this post recording wizard. Just going to click next and I'm going to skip this step for now. And I'm going to retain the same record at think time. And now we are seeing something like, you know, form authentication uh, page, which we did not get when we recorded the unauthenticated workflow or the workflow that doesn't have any sort of login in or uh, you know username or password that kind of information we did not fed in so such kind of form authentication uh, uh, option did not appear okay just click next and then finish now let's check okay so if we see this right if we compare this both the workflow <clears throat> the only addition is this sign in and click login apart from these two there is no uh, new transactions maybe just sign out okay so let's try to compare uh, these both of these uh, workflows So to expand these uh, transactions, I will just tell you the hierarchy of this. Okay, uh, later we will also uh, look at this in detail. Okay, but for now uh, I will just show you what what are these these things. Okay, so any web page right will have one main request. Okay, uh, so in this in this case what we are seeing is there is a catalog dot action is the main request or the uh, can also be called as an document okay and followed by a series of non html resources okay so what are the non html resources the css gif images uh, icons there are many a, a whole list of it all of them are considered to be as a non html resources 
okay yeah yes yeah that the uh, dot css and uh, top bar that, that that is not required right it is not required uh, but it depends on the project okay some project also may need them okay uh, but but yes I, I agree on it when we are looking only at the performance we will only check on the uh, main uh, request or the document okay but again it depends on the uh, project's requirement and its uh, projects uh, specific okay okay so uh, with this uh, script right so all these documents all there is a, a kind of a you know a document kind of icon all of them are individual requests okay a document with a blue ball okay see this one these are web pages okay as you can see here the page screens screenshot you are able to see it right here okay and these yellow folders are transactions and these violet color folders are the containers okay and uh, there is a, a human icon these are user paths okay so this is the hierarchy and the um, so under one page one or more uh, request can can reside and again same thing goes with it under one uh, transaction any of the uh, child pay, child uh, elements like uh, uh, documents or uh, web pages anything can can reside and uh, <coughs> under uh, under a user path there can only be three containers okay init action and end okay init is used for initializing where we can log in our users actions are the um, the actual uh, user actions and then end can be used for logging out okay all right now let's try to compare the recorded uh, workflows okay let's go one by one uh, so let me minimize all of these transactions okay so since there is uh, no sign out we are not going to look at it okay so let's look at this home page so home page there is no uh, or uh, there is no parameters here so and both of them are same similar okay let's look at uh, click item okay under this click item we see this catalog dot, dot action and a fish image or a gif and uh, it is it is almost ditto there is no difference okay with this transaction next uh, what we are going to look at is the click on angel fish okay so under this we are seeing some parameters but both of them are same okay there is no difference and the page is also same and uh, so let's move on to click fish okay uh, click fish so there is a some uh, again some parameters which is fish is getting passed so let me check here okay uh, so there is some difference here okay if we see here right um, in the path there is some uh, session id is getting passed but here uh, there is nothing is getting passed only the catalog dot action and it's uh, it's parameter is getting passed this is this is a difference with fish between unauthenticated and the authenticated workflow okay uh, there is no launch sorry there is no login so we will skip this and uh, if we see this uh, so we see in the launch so there is action uh, catalog dot action and followed by uh, some css and gifs something like that it should be the same okay it won't be uh, there won't be any major difference so, but let's see the uh, main document there is no parameters okay we can skip this also okay now the only uh, transactions that are not there is 
is this one okay and sign out let's look at this this part so uh, in this one uh, i think uh, this uh, session id is getting passed okay click sign in okay i think uh, so whichever if we can see there is a pattern right so as soon as the launch happens whatever the action that user is going to click it is going to have j session id so that is the pattern here okay so like this we will also be able to understand the application from the uh, working perspective okay and let's look at this login okay so i see uh, there is a username and password is getting passed okay uh, username uh, so uh, is jped user which uh, we have fed in and the password is also jped user okay we can check it uh, so whenever there is a password variable gets passed new load automatically uh, creates a auto password variable okay as we can see here it is the jped user okay so we can see this right uh, so we have just fed username and password and we haven't uh, did anything on this okay see this right these are uh, some random dynamic values that is also getting passed along with the uh, username when we are feeding to it okay now uh, when we are uh, looking at these right see there is a again another uh, dynamic value is getting passed so here there is a, some dynamic values getting passed so let's check the sign out okay there is nothing here so we can skip this as well so where, wherever that we see there is some kind of a dynamic values okay these can be considered as a critical transactions okay uh, this uh, this need not be restricted to only login or uh, you know some other uh, transactions okay but but ideally wherever that we see there are some dynamic values that that is mostly authenticated see even this login transaction is all about um, validating a user and then uh, granting access to that specific application correct so uh, this tr transaction is the same thing that is replicating it okay and now we are going to we can call this login as a authenticated transaction so if we see this rest all of them are same okay uh, the only uh, transaction that can be called here as an authenticated transaction is the login which is going to be critical and uh, if this transaction did not uh, you know pass then uh, most likely the user will not gain access to the application okay so that's the uh, difference right we will further be exploring uh, into this like uh, what all these uh, these dynamic values and uh, how do we handle them right all of these aspects we will be uh, seeing uh, as we progress okay and uh, i'm just uh, looking for a volunteer i think ravindra do, uh, are, have you joined uh, using a laptop oh, I'm... sorry i am on a phone uh sorry i'm not using sorry. the lab i'm using my phone oh, okay 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 all right okay then i think uh that's fine okay now i thought of uh doing some kind of a you know live installation of new load uh where uh, the learners can uh, uh, uh you know i can walk you through and then you can install it okay um if not we can uh we'll be able to uh, yeah, do yeah. it uh, on monday yeah yeah Nevin. sorry for the interruption Yes, yes, local, local. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I already I have installed uh, in your world in my laptop. Okay, okay. But now I have okay. connected through. That is okay. Yeah, um, here I. Have, yeah, yeah, here uh, one query. Yes. Uh, how to find the the dynamic values? Uh, it's a it's a exact uh, correlation or parameterization. Uh, how to find that so uh, if you see this right um, there's a random num random values is getting passed okay uh, these are the dynamic values that we have to handle it uh, through correlation only 
okay okay there is also this kind of uh, uh, transactions where there is a some session id is getting passed again we would need to handle this as well okay mm -hmm. uh, this we will be uh, will be learning as we progress okay <clears throat> okay so let's uh, continue okay with this session yeah. so i mean uh, one question yes is there yes. any other way to compare with uh, this script i mean uh, comparison the two scripts i mean in load runner the win differences in web load uh -huh. the beyond yes compare. no there is no such a comparison the way how i have just showed you today right you know script comparison oh, maybe yeah. this might uh, <laughs> look little tedious uh, activity in the beginning okay. uh, okay. but but as we progress right uh, this this becomes really intuitive and easy to work with I don't know if the transactions are more. I mean, uh, the first the first script is uh, like uh, 30 transaction, and second script also 30 transaction. It is very big, right? Do the comparison uh -huh. buffers. Correct, correct, correct. But uh, my question is, why would you need to compare? Uh, probably to identify the dynamic values, right? If it is the first, I mean, the basic thing. I mean, the beginner is the, uh, I mean, the new load uh, thing. Uh -huh. so yeah is, yeah i get uh, you uh, see where, where is where this is coming from is uh, as mm -hmm. per my understanding you want to compare uh, two scripts only reason mm -hmm. is if you want to identify some dynamic values correct that mm -hmm. is the That's idea right. behind it if at all if we are comparing yeah. and in load runner it's, it is mostly it is code right it is like uh, it is written in code and then it becomes might little difficult for humans to compare or you know see through the code and then identify the dynamic values so that's the uh, existence of comparison uh, feature in neo load uh, sorry in load runner okay yeah but in and case of neo load right it is so as we see right uh, so see this kind of uh, transaction view uh, you know it looks so pleasant to eyes right so it is so easy and then uh, um, the dynamic values are you know uh, it is is uh, it is rightly placed and it is very simpler for us to identify it just by looking at this request okay but this is not the case with load runner when you are looking at uh, a, a request you probably don't even know where exactly you are in right if let's say if your recording has more than 1000 lines of code unless you mm -hmm. have that uh, start transaction end transaction probably you will not have any idea that where you are actually right in the part of the script correct yes correct yes okay. but if if you look at this right it is so uh, sim simplest form of uh, looking at your uh, transactions and the and it's uh, you know components right the parameters and the other other parts so mm -hmm. this will be simpler in finding uh, the dynamic values i don't think the comparison is is required the reason why i was Uh, showing the comparison for this is to sh uh, show you difference between the unauthenticated and authenticated transactions okay like how no, this no. is fundamentally different no, okay purpose is not uh, not uh, i mean not a required thing if it is uh, the beginner thing if uh, and i yes, mean yes. correct correct see that is how uh, the session will be uh, i know there are folks who have worked with uh, load runner or jmeter and they may know yes. like what i am telling but it is the basic part that that is where uh, we are uh, starting with because there are some folks who are not even uh, you know introduced to performance and uh, this is the first ever tool that uh, they are going to work with so so that is how it is something some part of the sessions might feel it's too basic but it is it is required and it is necessary yeah <laughs> okay so Uh, i think yeah we can resume uh, from this okay so let's uh, get into the introduction of uh, performance testing uh, so i uh, right uh, so uh, just please give me a moment okay so uh, as we know 
uh, performance testing uh, it is used to uh, determine the performance of the application under load or in other words we can also say like there could be different types of load which creates different uh, types of scenario um, that may replicate some real uh, real time uh, situation okay so why do we ne need to do uh, performance testing right uh, so uh, let's look at it so uh, if if the application is is not uh, you know uh, well it's, it's not up and running then there is a possibility that we might lose the business right so so where is this coming from so let's say i'm as an end user i'm trying to uh, browse uh, let's say amazon.in right and uh, if even even after waiting for more than 10 seconds if i don't get the response what am i going to do i'm going to jump to the other uh, e-commerce website right so this this is what we do correct so so what happens this is an opportunity cost for any business that is running right online which is uh, which they keep online as their main source of uh, orders or something and uh, there would there would be a lot of opportunity cost okay so to keep the system uh, stable up and running uh, it needs a lot of effort and this is why we are we need to do performance testing right so that we can avoid this opportunity opportunity cost by investing some into the performance testing okay so the other part is faster the website more the revenue right so again, I think we all must have booked uh, Tatkal tickets, right? And uh, every time what happens whenever uh, at exactly at 11 o'clock, the website becomes slower. And uh, what happens, there could be a number of issues that might happen, right? Uh, one is uh, we, we won't be able to log in. Uh, the other part is we might have logged into the system, but we won't be able to see the tickets sometimes we we can see yes, the sir. tickets and we we have also placed an order right book the ticket but what happens uh, we might not get the confirmation correct like uh, the money might have debited from the account but uh, there would be some error okay so all of these uh, issues could be avoided if we have the if we keep the system uh, at well stable and it is uh, of robust yes uh, somebody wants to ask some question okay I take that as a no so let me continue so the other part is so uh, we have to uh, determine how scale scalable the system is so when I say scalable um, so I'd like to take a, a small analogy, right? Um, when we look at a restaurant business or a hotel, right? Uh, where, uh, where we can uh, go and dine in and uh, have some food. And uh, those kind of businesses are, are, if you see, like they at least make uh, anywhere between 30 to 50% profit. Okay. But the problem with that kind of business is it is not scalable, right? Um, so even during the peak hour or let's say like uh, the peak hours are usually uh, you know breakfast time lunch time and dinner and apart from these time right um, maybe during the peak hour they, they might serve more than uh, 200 or 300 but it is still uh, there's a lot of limitation in in such kind of business but such kind of problem is not there with the uh, digital uh, businesses right so it it can be scalable and we have to see how scaling scalable that is and amazon is the best example for it um, and uh, this can also be applied to any other uh, social media applications uh, like facebook instagram etc right uh, because of they had the power of scaling uh, they have become the uh, the big giants of the uh, you know uh, tech they are going to uh, we are going to call that them as a tech giants 
it's because of this scalable uh, there is no uh, limit for them to scale uh, you know uh, to scale right so there's a lot of opportunity and they have they were able to uh, grasp it because they were scalable one other example is i think we have all recently came to know about this app called signal okay uh, due to some kind of uh, whatsapp's privacy policy uh, signal uh, suddenly kind of became popular but they were not able to successful because they couldn't scale it within certain time because uh, they started seeing a huge influx of user users downloading their applications and then uh, uh, right what happened because they lost the opportunity to scale they have lost so much of customers and i don't think i don't even know whether if uh, they are still uh, uh, in the business right but still maybe some users are using um, the signal app right so this is very very important whenever the opportunity knocks we have to be ready to scale the system right so scalability is very very important for any business to grow right and of course stability uh, stability all also talks about how stable the system is and how robust it is right to to serve the end users and of course at the end of the day the customers are the uh, you know uh, that makes the business uh, you know successful so these are some of the area that we have to really check in on why we should do performance testing in any application okay so there are again some some of the performance testing types right that are associated so when we say performance testing it is not one type of testing that we are going to do there are different types because we are we are going to see this as a whole right it is not like a functional testing where we will only look at a certain part of the uh, application no we are going to test the entire system and the entire system is involved okay so let's see what are these types okay so the most common type is the load test load test is almost synonymous to the performance testing okay uh, that means if anybody says performance testing usually they are uh, they are referring to this load test okay load test means it's just the application under the usual business load okay business uh, user load stress test is the uh, another type of test where we are trying to uh, stress the system and then break the system okay soak test is used to determine the stability so soak test can also be called as an endurance test where we are seeing the endurance of the uh, system right so this is for soak test and there is a smoke test so as the name suggests it is uh, it is the shortest form of test okay it is can be used for warm up warm up test or a validation test and there is a spike test right so when we say spike test there is a sudden jump in the user load that is from the normal uh, business as usual okay uh, load so what is the spike test so let me give you a, a, a you know a, a small example so we we have all we have uh, traveled from one uh, city to other cities and uh, you know sometimes we might uh, go on a long uh, bus journey in the morning or in the afternoon and what happens there would be some time uh, or uh, some kind of a location uh, where uh, the bus will go and stop right maybe it is a motel or it is a kind of a highway uh, eateries uh, maybe uh, having some tea coffee or something like that so let's assume uh, there is no no buses or no cars okay but suddenly at some point of time let's say around 5 5 pm in the evening okay suddenly like three four buses uh, are stopping at the, at a specific uh, let's say a tea shop right what happens at that time there is going to be a huge spike in the users right so all of the uh, so at least in like let's say like average 10 people are getting down of the bus and trying to have the tea right so it's going to be 40 plus people and uh, to handle such spike right so similar i think you can get the idea right so what is the spike from the normal business 
if there is a sudden huge inflow of users that is called as a spike test okay and uh, we will be simulating different types of tests uh, which can match the real user scenario and there is a finally its capacity it is used to determine the um, so here it's so when we say application breakpoint it is not like uh, we are breaking the system but just before breaking the system okay it's like uh, it's like as good as uh, you know pouring uh, a water in a one liter water bottle right when we reach the 1000 ml that is when we know we have reached the uh, uh, the capacity okay so i think uh, uh, we will uh, wrap up uh, for today uh, if there is any questions uh, you can please uh, ask i will uh, try to answer so when will be regular class is starting uh, the regular start uh, is starting from today it is we have we are just uh, had the day one okay So uh, the tool is free and I can yeah. upload the online, right? Sorry. The tool is free to download. Yes, the tool is free, and uh, I will walk you through. So uh, what we will do is on Monday. Uh, so I would request, uh, you know, uh, everyone to uh, please join with your laptop so that I can guide you, or anybody can take it up. For example, Ravindra, if you if you want to uh, have a, a guidance on that. We can connect. When we connect, we will start with the installing the new load okay. in your system. Okay. Okay. And uh, then we will also activate uh, your uh, in your uh, system the license. Uh, the license is not necessary initially, but uh, anyways, we will we will look at it. Okay. I have one final question. Uh, I mean, do we have something like a web uh, cloud application you're going to show us? Web cloud application? But not web, but so cloud applications. Go through this, do performance testing through this tool. No, no, no. This is only about uh, performance testing and uh, uh, yeah. tool walkthrough uh, or hands on, and uh, there is going to be uh, some. Uh, okay exercises and uh, different uh, parts that we will be working with uh, maybe to be specific uh, i'll go into uh, a cloud application and uh -huh. no no cloud uh, but if you have uh, more questions you can check the yesterday's uh, session uh, so we we had discussed on what we are what you can expect from this course and what we are going to do uh, in this yeah. course okay uh, that would be discussed yesterday so there is a so in this group i will i will try to send you the uh, sds link uh, then i think uh, you, you will know right yeah right uh, uh, i did not and i did not go into detail my thought is that uh, you have examples for container applications no I'll go through that with you. Okay, sure. Okay, I think if there is uh, no questions, we can wrap up. Okay, thank you all for joining. Uh, I'll see you all on uh, Monday. Yeah, have a happy weekend. Thanks for joining. Thanks. Okay.